guys. Welcome to Eggs. On today's episode, we have a new sponsor. Uh, the sponsor is uh, Audible. Uh, get a free audio book download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash egg show. That's E G G S S H O W. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from, and you can download them on your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, your whatever you got. So check it out audible.com. Uh, well, actually, it's audibletrial.com forward slash egg show. Yeah, and Mike, I mean, as a guy that does a lot of road trips, you're uh, a big fan of Audible, aren't you? Oh, dude, I use them all the time. I know just recently you've been doing a lot of reading or listening. Well, yeah, I don't, what do you call it when you do it from Audible? Do you still get to say you read the book? I don't think, well, the thing is, is I don't think that the um, the way you learn is the same. I think listening to it, you have to really pay attention. And if you don't, you don't get the same out of it. And I kind of, when I drive, I listen and, but I get distracted. So there'd be sometimes when I've listened to a whole book and half of it, I didn't even, you know, get anything out of, I'd need to go back and listen yeah, to no, it that's again. True. I, I, a lot of times we'll have that situation going on where I'll be trying to listen in one week, one ear while I work on something else. And, uh, it never works that great. But when you stop and focus, uh, I really like the audio format versus just sitting down and reading. Well, the thing that's great about it is, um, you know, like I, a 12 hour drive, I can, uh, you know, listen to the radio or listen to something educational and, uh, you know, I'll download them and throw them on my iPod and I've got 20, 30 different books I can choose from. And, uh, it's, it's great. I've, I've learned a lot of cool stuff just over the last that's year cool. or two. Can that you I've make been a, can you make a recommendation? What's a what's a recent book you've read that's good uh, or listen to? I guess I should shoot. say. Uh, there's a few of them. I'm uh, last few weeks I've been listening to a book called uh, War and World History. Uh, it's by Jonathan Roth. Um, it's part of the uh, Great Courses series. Um, there's another book that I listened to in that series called uh, Food: A Culture of Culinary History. Um, and that it, it's kind of cool because since it's on the same series, they kind of do the same thing. They start at like the beginning of time and go from there. So like the food one, um, the, the, we used to be hunter gatherers. We'd go in, you know, depending on, you know, what the weather was like to determine what we would eat and, you know, and, and it, it talked about, Hey, Hey, we learned how to farm and now we can grow grain and we can do this. And what changed because of that? the war in the world history is kind of doing the same thing. They're going from before, you know, like the stone age to now the bronze age and they, they got spear points and then, you know, uh, how the invention of a chariot, um, brought war into different neighborhood tribes because I, I don't know. It's just, I find stuff like that. Interesting. Um, I'm, I'm horrible with names, dates and, and, you know, like remembering stuff like that. But the overall story I, I can remember. And so like if I'm, I don't know, if I'm trying to recall something that I read, I can never remember the guy's name or who it was about or what date it was. But I don't know. I find it interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Well, anyway, Audible is a new sponsor of the show. And uh, it, by going to our link, audibletrial.com slash eggs show, you can download uh, a free audio book and get a free 30 day trial from over 100 180,000 titles. And uh, it's totally worth your while. So uh, yeah. take it from a guy like Mike that spends a lot of time on the road. Uh, it's definitely worth doing. So once again, yeah. that's audibletrial.com slash eggs show. I, I think it's like 15 bucks a month and they give you one, one free download for the subscription. Uh, and then you can buy multiple packs. Like if you want to get more books, you can get three downloads for a cheaper rate or something like that. I usually just, uh, download the one a month and it usually keeps me pretty occupied. So I, I just, uh, I actually just downloaded another one and I'm excited to listen to it. It's, um, or da, 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 shoe dog by Phil Knight. Um, oh, okay, Ryan the Car Nike guy. Yeah. Right? yeah, he's the the founder of Nike. Uh, Ryan Carson brought it up, and uh, I thought it would be a good book to listen to. So awesome. Well, yeah, check it out. Audible uh, audibletrial dot com slash eggshell for your free trial and your free audiobook. So what have you been up to? 
Dude, so this is our first time just sitting and visiting uh, without an interview. Uh, this is technically the first show in our second year, uh, episode 53, so week 53. Uh, last week, we had an awesome interview with a guy named Ryan Carson, a uh, really interesting dude, CEO of uh, Team Treehouse, uh, and that sort of put a cap on year one. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about just sort of the year in review, see if you had any any favorite moments, highs and lows, anything you wanted to talk about from last year. I don't know, man. There's a lot. Um, well, there really is. I mean, you know, if you think about it, I mean, because this thing just started last year. So, uh, you know, the show and it's, I don't know, been, been, I think, and we, we've gushed a little bit about it on, on previous shows, but it's just been one of the most rewarding things we do, or I do anyway, that I, I really enjoy it. And, uh, there were, you know, a lot of high points, I think over the course of the year, you know, lots of firsts and lots of, uh, you know, sort of stuff that I never thought might happen if it hadn't been for the show. And so a couple of things uh, that I wanted to point out, like a couple, you know, big, big moments for me was uh, the episode with Gina Grad. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, you know, really great show. And still, it's one of the ones we use when we're trying to promote the show and hype things up a little bit. We share her interview because it was so well, great. But it was not only was it a great interview, it was also our first phone call in. So we yeah. had to kind of like figure that out. And that was tricky. Yeah, it was kind of a technological marvel, uh, yeah. although it was really low tech how we wound up doing it. But uh, we ended so. up uh, just talking into the phone so she could hear us and putting it kind of in between our microphones so I could record that and the output of the phone. And that was it worked, but it was yeah. probably. Yeah, wasn't ideal, but it did. It did work. And so and it was funny, too, because I think that was maybe not our first, but one of our first times recording out of the old uh, Studio 6. It was our the, second. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the Motel 6 near my home in uh, Salt Lake. And uh, so we, we would go over there to find a quiet place to record from. And so it was kind of fun to, to do that. Well, and mo speaking of Motel 6, there was that uh, time I was in Oregon and just sat in the parking lot and stole Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. fantastic. And, and it's fun because I mean, this whole first year has really been a lot of like kind of hackery, you know, I mean like, uh, Mike, you know, for people that don't realize Mike is, is an audio engineer. So, I mean, he has some idea about how to put a show like this together and how to, you know, capture our audio and things, but we've definitely pushed, you know, not just Mike's limits, but the limits of how people communicate. I mean, we've, we've done this show from Spain, from Hawaii, from uh, outside of a hotel in, in Tillamook, Washington or, or Tillamook, Oregon. Yeah. We've done, you know, uh, from places on the road over cell phones, over, you know, uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, uh, from hotels. I mean, like, well, yeah, we, I mean, we've literally just just uh, not even that, but the, I mean, like we rent hotel rooms to do it. You know, I mean, it's, it's I don't know. I, I, we, we've overcome a lot of hurdles to make this show happen. And I think it's, well, kinda, and I think, I think that's why, at least for me anyway, and I don't want to speak for you, but I think that's one of the reasons why this show has been so rewarding and or fulfilling is because, you know, really, I mean, and even tonight is, is no, I mean, is a perfect example, right? It's kind of hell or high water. The show will go on. And right now, I mean, it's, it's Wednesday night at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, Mike and I are recording the show remotely. I'm in Salt Lake. He's in Idaho. And, you know, the show will be live tomorrow, Thursday, yeah. Thursday morning. And, you know, don't get me wrong. We could probably be served well by, by planning a little further ahead or doing these things a week in advance or whatever, but we're so committed to making sure the show happens that, you know, even, even at personal inconvenience or crazy hours of the night or whatever, we, you know, we've still managed to stay committed to getting the show done. And I think that's really uh, a, a cool thing for us. Yeah. I actually want to circle back around on, this in a little bit after we kind of finish our favorite interviews or whatever, because uh, yeah, yeah, let's circle back. I'll uh, remind me and we'll bring it back up. The whole reason oh, why sure. is, uh, Zencaster issues. I want to, I want to talk about that. Yeah, um, well, and speaking of that, it's being a little buggy already. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the other, uh, sort of highlight or one of the highlights, I mean, and there, and there really were many, I just don't want to beat it into the ground, but there, there were a lot of great ones this year. Uh, one of the other ones that was just sort of near and dear to my heart was, uh, with the mixed mob guys, 
uh, a couple months ago, a uh, band Mix Mob came through town. Uh, really old friends of mine. Yeah, um, that was a lot of and, fun. Uh, I mean, it sort of, again, you know, in the spirit of sort of hackery or making the show work, I think we had like six or seven mics going that day. Yeah, and I um, actually, we bought that Midas mixer for like, I bought it then specifically so we'd have something to record those guys. Um, so which it is, worked like a charm. It, yeah, it's great. I, I bought it for my studio, but I ordered it a few weeks earlier just so that we would have something with six or seven channels so we could do that. And it it was pretty cool. I mean, it, it worked perfectly. Yeah, it was so, really <laughs> great. And for people who haven't yeah. listened, I mean, you know, the, the show is a little bit of uh, therapy or catharsis for all of us, uh, the, myself and the Mixed Mob guys and, you know, a little walk down memory lane. But I think it was, you know, a really strong episode, a lot of fun. And, you know, so it was uh, really positive or high note for me, not just because I got to spend all this time with those guys again and sort of go down memory lane, but, you know, just, it was a technological achievement for this show. One of the most complex sessions we'd done before and, uh, you know, live on the spot out of a hotel room in downtown Salt Lake. So, but it was was cool too, because it was like, I think it was like our first interview where it was kind of just open format. Let's just talk. Yeah. And it came out really well. So we had some show notes put together, but it wasn't like we were grilling them, asking questions, you know, like it was more just, Hey, remember this? Remember that? And it, it, it yeah, there was no, yeah, it was like, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what about you, Mike? You got a couple of faves? I have a few. Uh, Vega was one of my favorites. Uh, um, DJ Vega. Yeah. Yeah. He was on tour with, uh, Ryan Caraveo. And we caught up with him at Kilby Court. Um, it was an awesome interview, just really cool. Uh, I'll remember it for a while. He's a cool dude. Um, yeah, he was great. And, you know, that was actually our, our first backstage interview. No, it was our second. Oh, yeah. Did. Uh, we did uh, D- 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 Desi Valentine was our first. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, and Desi, by the way, has gone on to some success, I assume, from having been on our show. Yeah, we, but, we, um, we spearheaded it for him. Yeah. <laughs> so, but actually, I've seen a bunch of stuff going on with him, but I noticed they're playing one of his songs in a uh, Budweiser commercial now. So he's, yeah. he's hitting it big. So, so good for him, though. We really enjoyed him, and he was he was fantastic as that well. Did, uh, I would have to say that's on my top three. Uh, him, Vega, and Zach Davidson from Vendetta Red. Um those three to me yeah. were just really cool. Um, and I really liked the mix mob interview too. So it, I think, you know, it's been a fun year and a fun group of, uh, people that we can in, in interview. And, you know, the very last one of the year was, uh, Ryan Carson. And that was just a great way to end it, you know? Yeah, no, a, his interview has, was actually very impactful for me. And, uh, you know, it started, I guess, a couple weeks ago when we had uh, Brett Pinnegar on the show. He was a, a CEO and, and, you know, businessman and stuff like that. And, of course, you know, I'm in business and always looking for people to kind of look up to or whatever. And so it was really cool to sit and talk with Brett and, you know, pick his brain a little bit. I thought he had some really cool perspectives on things and, and gave some really great advice, But you know, to both me and Mike. And, uh, you know, regarding what we're working on separately. So and then when Ryan Carson came on, he sort of took that to another level. And, uh, you know, just his positivity and his outlook on everything, um, some of the little life hacks he he's uh, incorporated to uh, find the success that he's found through his company and just the trials and tribulations to get to where he is now uh, was all really inspiring for me, really interesting. So I think it's cool that we have access to people like that, um, you know, because their their education that they're getting by being in that position and starting something like a website and building it up from the ground up, that's information and knowledge you're not going to get anywhere else. You're not going to get that in college. You're not going to get that, you know, um, unless you get out and do it. And so having someone like that that will come on our show and talk about those experiences and and stuff, it just it, – it's – Awesome. And uh, yeah, I can't it really believe is. It. Yeah. Well, and I'm looking forward to it. We have coming up uh, in a week or so, we have a CEO of another company. I'm sure we'll get some interesting bits from him as well. Uh, and I anticipate we'll look for some more guys in the tech sector and things like that as well, because I, I just that Ryan, uh, Ryan's interview and Brett's interview both 
were really powerful, at least for me personally. And, uh, and I assume that, tra- you know, translates to people who listen to the show as well. Yeah. So, uh, what are you kind of taking? Well, from so there? I guess, I guess the biggest change for me, and it's kind of funny because it's just kind of a, a tweak, right? Um, so I'm actually calling myself a CEO now, <laughs> which, <Okay. laughs> which on, pa- on paper, I've been a CEO for 10 years, but, um, I have always been, I guess, maybe it's because I'm insecure or whatever. Like I've sort of always hidden behind the company. Anything I published, every post on social media, every everything has been done as our two media group. It was never from me. Yeah. And uh, even though largely most of that stuff came from me. And um, one of the things I found just from looking at guys like Ryan Carson and and others um, I decided to start modeling a little bit after the people who are, you know, achieving and who are, who are the people who are setting standards and and creating new things. So one of the things I noticed is that Ryan is, you know, there's the team Treehouse accounts and everything, you know, you can follow uh, just the company team Treehouse, but Ryan Carson also has his own things. He's a a thought leader and he's, uh, you know, writing and producing social media and all this stuff on his own outside of Treehouse and allowing himself to sort of build his own personal brand, uh, you know, outside of the company. And uh, for me, I, I had never, I mean, it sounds dumb, but like I it never even occurred to me to do that sort of thing. Well, because you're uh, focused on the company, you're not focusing on right. Ryan Rogar, you know. It's- yeah. Well, and you and me are a little bit the same, Mike, in that, you know, both of us have kind of a weird uh, thing where it's difficult to look at yourself as the personality, you know, I, I know you've been noticing this more in your career lately, uh, as you know, people are starting to recognize you and they're coming out to see you play specifically and things like that. And, yeah, uh, you know, you're becoming, yeah, you're becoming more of a personality. You're becoming known for what you do. Um, where, you know, I've sort of kept myself from being known for what I do because I've always sort of been under the company. And, uh, you know, even if you looked at like my LinkedIn profile until recently, it just had me listed as creative director, you know, at R2 media group, which is my expertise. It is what I do. You know, I am a creative director, but, um, but more than that, I, I own the company. I'm the boss. I should, you know, should be that guy. Yeah. It's funny. I, I do the same thing with audio star. I'm a event manager at audio star, like, and I own the business, you know, yeah, I, I just it's don't like, funny. I, I don't know. I, I like to keep that kind of separate, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's how I've always been too. But then I'm looking at these guys who are successful and I'm saying, what are they doing that I'm not doing? And that's one of the things they're doing. Uh, you know, so this, this idea of generating my own voice is, is kind of new for me is a tweak for me. Uh, you know, and we've talked about it on the show before. I mean, even putting ourselves out there on this show, you know, it was a lot more nerve wracking in the beginning than it is now, but oh, I, mean, I still hate it, dude. I still, <laughs> no, but it was definitely out of character for me, especially, yeah. you know, and, I mean, you at least, you know, go out and perform in front of people. I usually can sit behind my computer and email people. And so, uh, you know, so for me, uh, come out and actually try and find a voice and try and take all the opinions and all the knowledge that I've picked up over the years and start actually sharing it from me, uh, is a little bit of a, a nuanced tweak to the way I've always run my life. So yeah. I'm nervous, well, but I'm excited. It's kind of cool. And, uh, and it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for having Ryan on the show and Brett Pinnegar. Well, yeah, I, I think you would have come around to it anyways. We're kind of you know, setting ourselves out there as people who are talking about this kind of stuff. So it would probably evolve eventually, but seeing what they're doing and and talking to people like that has definitely given us a head start. Yeah. Well, it definitely gave me the spark I needed anyway, and sort of the, uh, the impetus, I guess, to sort of start moving. Um, one of the other things I picked up from Ryan is, uh, writing and publishing on medium. Medium is a uh, platform for writers and thought leaders and people like that. It's, you know, more or less a blog, a place to publish articles. But uh, but it's really cool. It's socially integrated. It's, you know, really easy to distribute from and everything. It's, it's a cool platform. Uh, but anyway, I noticed that Ryan was sharing articles on Medium, uh, as well as a couple other guys that I've been following around a little bit. And, uh, and so I set up a Medium account and sort of 
uh, we've covered something like this on the show before, but this idea of really putting something out there into the ether and then that sort of, you know, applies some social pressure or something like I said, I'm going to do it, you know, out loud to however many people hear this show. And now I must follow through because yeah. I don't want to look like an asshole. <laughs> yeah. And so um, my first post on Medium is, you know, basically an article thanking Ryan and Brett for the nudge I needed to get started and saying, here we go, you know? And so if I don't chase that with something, then I look like an asshole. And so, um, so I've actually, I've, I've published two articles since then already and, uh, on a couple different subjects and, and I'm having fun just sitting down and writing creatively and just, you know, getting ideas on paper. And, uh, it's been pretty fun and rewarding really. I mean, I'm only, you know, this is my first week, uh, post Ryan Carson interview, but, um, it's uh it's been really productive one and so i've been doing the writing i also started getting up at 4 30 in the morning which is also a, a ryan carson clone move uh we, my dad actually who or stepdad who is a, a businessman you know he's a, a early riser too i've always been a work late guy but um uh, you know a, a lot of people vouch for the idea of getting up early and working early in the morning well for you it's definitely a, i think it's better to get up early because you're going to sleep around the same time anyway so you're getting that extra time without the kids before well, they and get that's up. the key right is cuz you know with two young boys in the house and stuff you know it's hard to hard to find quiet time where i can sit and focus and uh, so what I've been doing is I, I'm getting up at 430 and taking a little bit of time each morning to write on my medium profile and uh, and work on articles and things like that. And then the other thing I'm doing that was taken from our conversation with Ryan is I'm uh, taking courses on sales right now. So one of the things I've never Coursera. done, I've never uh, I'm doing it both on Coursera, uh, which was a Ryan recommend. I mean, I should just say it's all kind of because of him so that I don't well, have to keep He's got a good name. name. Uh, I mean, it's. Yeah, right. I like it. So, but, uh, but anyway, so Coursera was something he recommended. And for people who don't know Coursera, it's basically an online university. Um, you can take courses from a lot of big name schools. Well, and, I was actually, you know, um, universe, uh, ASU the same program that they do for the Starbucks employees, uh, mm -hmm. I think is available through Coursera at a discounted rate. So if yeah. you, you know, you're not yeah, working at Starbucks, a, but you want to go through the online program, you can take the same classes that they're offered and, and have available to them. Yeah. So. And they actually offer, you know, master's programs, everything, all kinds of stuff. It's really cool. But there's a lot of programs on there that, or most of the classes, in fact, that you don't even have to pay for. It's just, uh, you know, you can pay if you want the certificate, but if you don't need the certificate and you just want to learn the information, you can do that for free. Um, at most, I think it's 49 bucks a month or something. And yeah. uh, that's pretty, pretty cheap compared to like the cost of a university or something. Well, there's that. And there's also a bunch of like um, those great courses that uh, I was talking about earlier for the Audible intro or whatever that sounded mm -hmm. like shit. Um, <laughs> they actually have, uh, it's called Great Courses Plus. And it's a paid kind of subscription kind of thing, but it's it's kind of like a Hulu for learning, you know, like you can take you can watch videos uh, for science, for travel, for health, for, you know, whatever you're into. They have a ton of uh, lectures and, and classes that you can take. So instead of just, you know, Netflixing and wasting four hours, you can Netflix and learn something, you know, which I think is awesome. Yeah, it really is. And uh, the other platform I've been using is lynda.com. And a lot of people know lynda.com. But, um, you know, just a, basically I'm, I'm studying up on sales. You know, I mean, hey, I run a business and I'm not much of a salesperson. You know, I mean, how's that supposed to work? Yeah. So, uh, you know, so I'm going through, I'm going back and learning some fundamentals and things like that. And, uh, and I, again, I, I wouldn't have made that move on my own. Probably I need, I needed to hear that from somebody. So, so, uh, two books yeah, for so you since you're learning sales um the greatest salesman in the world by og mandino it's kind of like the default go to the first book you read on sales kind of thing uh it's the story of like a camel boy who achieves a life of abundance and how he got from being like a farm helper to making money and then through sales. And then the other book that you want to check out is called How to Win Friends and Influence People by uh, Dale Carnegie. And that one is a, a really good one. It, it 
Um, I had the notes in front of me earlier, but I had to refresh uh, Chrome when we restarted Zencaster. So I don't have it now, but I think there was like 30 million copies sold worldwide. And it's just a really good book. And I would recommend that one too. Cool. So. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, you know, just to keep this uh, ass kiss fest going, uh, one of the other things that we talked about, and we've talked about it with Brett and uh, with Ryan, as well as some other people, uh, the idea of mentorship and finding mentors. And, you know, basically I'm sort of, I mean, some people call them mentors. Other people would call uh, them stalkers, you know. And so I'm basically stalking these people right now because I haven't actually reached out to anybody for mentorship. <laughs> uh, so I guess they're, they're my virtual mentors. But um, but I've been doing a lot of studying up on people lately. And I think this is something people can do without the trepidation of, of what, you know, actually reaching out to somebody. Um, but, you know, one of the, the hot guys right now is this guy, Gary Vaynerchuk. He is, you know, a super intense uh, business guy. And, yeah, you've, you've uh, seen his videos you know, on Facebook and, and for sure. Yeah, like if that, you've been yeah. anywhere, you've seen him uh, giving inspirational talks or whatever. And. So I've been consuming a lot of his content over the last few days and a uh, really interesting guy, lots of fun stuff and uh, really motiva- uh, motivational. Uh, Tim Ferriss is a favorite of mine who I, I've been following for years and years, actually, since the uh, four hour work week came out, I think like 10 or 11 years ago now. Um, uh, I've been sort of just following his process and watching him work. He's He's been an inspirational uh, one for me. And then, of course, Ryan, who we've been talking about, and Brett. Um, so I've been sort of reading up on, on them and what they're publishing and, you know, looking at all the material they're putting out on social media and everywhere. And, and you know, it's really helping me get a pulse for what people who perform at that level are doing. Um, and, you know, I will say what's funny is it's nothing that revolutionary. I mean, they're smart people. They're putting out things like that. But a lot of it's common sense. The things that they're doing are the things that you know intrinsically that you should be doing. But you're not doing because you'd rather watch TV or you'd rather do whatever else. But uh, but it's not that they've cracked some code. It's just that they're out hustling everybody. Well, and they have a a schedule and habits and and things that they do. They've, They've built a system on how to succeed. And, you know, especially someone like Ryan Carson, when he's uh, computer programming related. I mean, there's, um, you, you think his schedule and everything he does is, you know, thought out <laughs> to a T, you know? Right. Um, well, and actually there's a, an article that I'm, I'm starting to get into now. Uh, Ryan put out a, uh, post on medium talking about how he plans out his year using different software. Uh, so he'll plan out his year and set goals using, he uses teamgant.com, which is a Gantt chart. Charts. Yeah. And uh, I use, I've got a, a Team Gantt subscription, but I also use, I use a software called Harvest for my timekeeping and invoicing and everything for the company. Uh-huh. And they have a, a, they have a Gantt system too called Forecast. So I'm trying to make Forecast work because it integrates more tightly with my uh, other stuff. But Team Gantt uh, is really slick and and it may actually be the better solution. You know, I just didn't want to have to log into more than one thing. Yeah. So uh, I like the thought of having the uh, the Gantt chart. It kind of it doesn't it just goes quarterly. Right. It kind of says, all right, I need to have this section done in this quarter and move on to the next and the next and the next. It's just a well, and it can be as yeah. And it can be as short as a day or as long as a year, you know, whatever you need to accomplish a goal. But like I think the whole point of it. And actually you can go back. Me and Mike did a show on setting goals really early in the, in the uh, early days of eggs. But um, I don't know if we want to send people back to those. days. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. So, but I'm sure we had good notes and I'm sure we said something useful. Uh, it may not have been done quite as professionally as we are now, you know, cause we're kind of over the top pros now, <laughs> but, um, but back then, as, you know, as we I go really back and edit this back. and hear all the, garbage that we're spinning right now <laughs> well if we hurry you won't have any time to edit okay. um so anyway it's uh i think that you know again just saying that what what these guys are doing isn't profound you know but taking the time to you know intentionally think about what you're doing and how quickly you want to get to that, get it done obviously helps you in actually getting something done and so, uh, you know, just taking that extra step of actually writing things down, setting goals, putting things down on paper, that one little extra step is a life hack that will change the way that you do everything. 
you know, and I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm like a do what I say and not as I do kind of a guy, because like, I'm, I'm horrible about writing lists and all that stuff. But, uh, coming off of this show last week, that's one of these steps I'm trying to take is get better about this. And he talks about Ryan, uh, talks about in his post on medium, a system of, you know, to do lists basically called, uh, uh, I think it's called the bullet journal. And he does, uh, you know, basically has his mole skin and there's a kind of a shorthand or whatever that you can use for, you know, logging different kinds of events and things like that. It's pretty basic. It's just a system for, for managing a to-do list. Um, but it, but it's pretty slick. And, uh, I ordered my, uh, my, uh, bullet, bullet journal notebook the other day so that I can get fully on board with doing that as well. And basically I'm just going to look at successful people and, and cop their style because uh, <laughs> I've been doing it. I've been doing it my way a long time and, uh, I don't have the, uh, the private jet just yet. Well, and the thing is, is any business, any creative outlet anyone working in this industry is going to see other people and kind of pull things from them and that there's a fine line between straight up jacking someone's stuff and using them for inspiration and i well and you know and i'll just oh sorry go ahead oh go um I was just going to say, like, for me is coming from like a wedding DJ to a mixed show DJ. I learned that the hard way when I was playing one of my mixes at a barbecue with one of the DJs that was there with me. I'll fuck it. I'll say it. Vic, uh, (laughs) I use a lot of his edits and uh, I'm sitting there at a barbecue with him. And uh, one of my anything goes mixes was on and I'm like, oh, shit, that's a Victor edit. That's a Victor edit that's a bit shit <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> so i didn't even think about you know like the i, I i'm borderline copying his style and uh i never thought of it until that moment and it was kind of weird <laughs> yeah. well to put it in like practical terms you know like is something that happened today and you know it's not even really about copying style it's just you know you want to model people who are doing what you want to do right yeah and so like today, for example, my, my youngest son had his last soccer game. And after soccer, we went to a, like a Mongolian barbecue place and like, I'm working really hard right now, trying to lose weight and stuff like that and trying to get fit and just be healthier overall, which, you know, was also pushed further by this Ryan Carson stuff and his going to the gym every day. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm getting into that rhythm. And so, but I've been eating better and doing a lot for months now. And when I, when we went to this barbecue place, I noticed that like every table was filled with super rotund people, right? This was a, an all you can eat style Mongolian barbecue Uh and it was full of like huge people. And I actually told my wife, I was like, I don't know how bad I want to hang out at a place like this because I'm surrounded by people who are going the wrong direction from where I want to go. Yeah. You know, and if people want to be heavy or whatever, or struggling with their weight, like I understand, I've been, you know, struggling with my weight forever. But, um, you know, I think just in the spirit of sort of looking at people who are doing what you want to do, you know, do you, if you want, if you're trying to lose weight, do you want to surround yourself with fat people or a bunch of fit people? And, uh, you know, and so, and it's the same in business or whatever else, right? You, do you want to surround yourself with successful people or people who aren't going anywhere? And so when we have the pleasure or the opportunity to meet somebody like a Ryan Carson or a Brett Penninger who has accomplished a lot in business, seems to be getting a handle on life, you know, even just understanding how to live and how to make time for family and make time for themselves and, and all that stuff. Like those are all really good things to be learning. And if you aren't a master of those things, why wouldn't you want to replicate somebody or sort of, you know, copy somebody's, uh, you know, positive characteristics and sort of implement them in your life. Well, it's, and where, it's, wherever you get them that from that inspiration from, I mean, it's kind of neither here nor there. Right. I mean, just take the positive and build it into your life. Well, here's, here's another example of that. So we're doing this podcast, right? Um, you know, I've, I love who we're interviewing. I'm learning a lot from them, but on my own time, I've started watching interviews. Like, uh, I record, uh, have you ever heard of audience music? It's um, an actual channel that they do. Uh, 
audience is the channel. Audience music is a thing where they have Friday nights, they bring a band in and then they let the band play and they record. It's actually, it's, it's badass because they, they do a live recording of the bands and they have an audio engineer that mixes it down. So I get to hear what a mix down from someone in the, in the pros does for like a TV show like that. Ted Stryker does a good job interviewing the guests. Uh, he's got, uh, like they, he had Jason Mraz on, he had corn on echo Smith, all time low Trey songs, bunch of really cool, broad spectrum of, of, uh, bands that come on country artists, all that fun stuff. And you hear he, he, you not only get to see him perform, but you hear their backstory. Like they're almost kind of like what we're doing, but it's, uh, the whole band and, and it's just conversations every week. So I started watching that just to kind of pick and pull, you know, like ideas from what they're doing to maybe use on our show. And I also watch another show called, uh, off camera with Sam Jones. Um, and then he does more like, um, uh, comedians actors uh i think he had like john goodman on there and uh bill Hader and the dude from how i met your mother uh josh radner um but it's cool to to watch their interview styles you know and and pull like you know things that they're doing that maybe i could use in the show and so really we all just kind of it's what you do you just reach out you look out and see what what's good about other things and try and emulate them you know and it's it's what yeah, and that's know. the thing is i think you know we shouldn't get too caught up in you know this feeling of oh i'm ripping off that guy's style or you know oh he did it i didn't think of it you know whatever i mean i think and one of the things i've been learning just in this reading and stuff uh speaking you know sort of back to to vaynerchuk you know a lot of people know him it's funny when i mention to people oh yeah no i've been listening to this vaynerchuk guy and i could be saying his name wrong i, I don't know but i think that's close um he uh you know is everybody's like oh well he's kind of a dick right he's really an abrasive guy he's kind of pushy and over the top he's kind of a no-nonsense guy but he is also super positive and uh, and what I'm what I'm finding I'm actually liking about him the most is that, yes, he's really no nonsense, but it's kind of good cop and bad cop rolled up into one, you know, convenient little package because he's, you know, yes, he's going to tear you down for doing your dumb shit, but he's also there to help you, you know, make the right choices and and sort of do it in a positive way. And, uh, you know, he'll encourage you when you need encouraging, but sort of tear you down and, and you know, push you through whatever bullshit you're telling yourself. And uh, I actually watched a video the other day. I wish I, I knew the details so I could share it with you. But um, it was a, a, he does a call in show, this thing, Ask Gary V. And he was on the on the speakerphone with some girl who's 23 years old and, t you know, talking about how, oh, well, I'm going to be a millionaire in a couple of years. And he's like, for what? You know, what are you doing? What have you accomplished? You're 23. You know? yeah. And he's like, you know, and this girl's comparing herself to a Kardashian and all this stuff. And he's just calling her on her crap the entire time. And you wonder uh, how people like know. that get in front of, uh, was it a call in thing? And she just called in and was saying, yeah. She, okay. Yeah, it's a call in thing. And, and I think they reach him on Instagram or whatever. And I, I think he just randomly takes people. Huh. And so, and you know, so, but like I found that even though he's sort of known for being a little bit abrasive or a little bit tough on people, like most of these people, he's not really tearing them down. Like he's helping them cut through whatever, you know, fake story they're telling themselves about how things are going. So he's like Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Just yeah. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's a, he's a good uh, example. Cause yeah, it's the same kind of thing. It's, you know, the reason Gordon Ramsay screams at you is because he knows the right way and he wants you to be able to do it the right way. Well, we were talking to Sean O'Neill about yeah. about that. And he was like, Gordon's an awesome dude. He's a great dude. And you just don't want to cross him. <laughs> you yeah. know? Well, and I think if I remember that right from when we were talking to Sean, he said that, that Gordon had grown up in a, you know, really strict kitchen, you know, under very strict rules and things like that. So he has a very, you know, deep appreciation for the business. But because of that, he doesn't tolerate bullshit in the kitchen. And so if you're in there and you're not doing your best or you're not working your hardest or you're not respecting the food or, or the work or the business, then he has no patience for you. And that's when you see him lashing out and exploding on people. And of course that makes great TV, but it's also, you know, good to hear sometimes. Like if you're one of those people, you know, you, can use a person like Gordon Ramsay. What, and what's correct. a show called where he goes in and uh, like uh, saves the, 
the restaurants that are failing. Is that him or is that someone else? Well, he, he does have one. I wish I could remember what it's called right now. I used to watch it actually. Well, it, it I, I, I mix it up with like bar rescue or whatever. Well, bar it's rescues out. Taffer. I can't remember what the name of his was. Um, regardless, some of those people that own the restaurants are getting into it and know nothing, have no restaurant history or background or anything or knowledge in the industry. And they're just bound to fail from the get go. And they really need a slap in the face to just kind of like wake them up and be like, Oh, this is how it works. This is how it should be done. Da, 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 da. And once they kind of get that figured out, you know, it's like a fresh start and they can actually run it like a business. Well, and that's so. the thing. You just, you sort of have to cut out all that riffraff and all the bad decision making you've been doing and open yourself up to hearing you know, somebody that actually knows what they're doing and why wouldn't you model yourself after like a Gordon Ramsay, right? I mean, he owns restaurants, he own you know, has this empire, all this stuff. I mean, if that's what you want, that's the guy you follow. Right? Yeah. Like what's the, what's the harm in, in emulating a guy like that? If he's the one that's doing what you want to do, uh, that show, I think by the way, is called kitchen night. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I used to love that show. There's one in particular so. about a restaurant in Scottsdale, I think. I'm going to have to Google that and see Scottsdale. Kitchen Nightmares. Um, Amy's Bakery, I think that's the one. Yeah, she just was in such denial. It was insane. If you get a chance to watch it, go and watch it. It's crazy. But Yeah, I think I actually remember seeing that one because, yeah, he... Uh, I mean, that series, I mean, it's kind of the same story each week, you know, there's somebody, you know, sort of family business, they're in denial about how things are never cleaning the kitchen, moldy food and the, you know, the, all. yeah. And I'm sure things are drama, dramatized a little bit for TV, but, uh, I, I'm sure these places exist, uh, you know, back to the, the Mongolian barbecue we went to tonight that, you know, I think that place is probably a little sketch. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but yeah, no. So the big, uh, I guess revelation from last week was just, you know, uh, I, I, I'm doing all these different things as a result of that Ryan Carson interview. And I think that, you know, people who listen to this show should take a minute. If you didn't hear that episode, go back and take a listen. Both his and Brett Pinnegar's are really good and motivational. It's done a lot for me and, uh, I'm hopeful that, uh, I'll have a little bit of a journey for you guys to follow along. Well, and that's one thing I think that's cool about this podcast uh, is because we're both at the start of a very interesting journey, right? Um, I'm about to launch a site hopefully soon. And uh, it's, it, it'll be cool to talk about the process of launching it, getting it going. What's well, I'm know. actually looking really forward to you getting this thing out. So I think, you know, that might be one of the things that was, was one of the bigger things for you that came out of that Ryan Carson interview. And don't let me speak for you, but um, you know, he, he sort of opened himself up to having a conversation with you about your, your product that you've been working on for a while. Yeah. And, uh, and we've kept it pretty down low on this show. You know, we haven't really t discussed your project too much, but I'm hopeful that, you know, with Ryan's support, he, he can give you the direction that you need to really get this thing going because I can't wait to talk about it. I know. It's likewise. Um, that's well, kind it's been of such a process and all that stuff. I just want to make sure you get your due for it. Because, <laughs> oh my God, you've been, Dude, killing, I, I tell you've been what, killing yourself for years on this thing. I mean, it'll if be I could just, a, a great if day. Just, if I can launch it and just get it going where it kind of does its thing and I don't have to spend 12 hours a day on every off day that I have uh, working on it, that will be reward enough. And uh, <laughs> just the knowledge that I got in the process of making it happen is reward enough. Whether the well, site succeeds or me, not. I, I'm just uh, just the process that I've gone through to get to where it is now uh, is such a learning experience, such a good experience, hard one, hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But it'll be worth it when it's all said and done, I hope. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. And, and I mean, you know, without getting into the project, I mean, we've talked about it before enough to say it's a web project, something you're working on. But I, I mean, I think where the real inspiration comes from in this thing is you know, you've been DJing for 20 years. You weren't a web developer and you've literally taught yourself web development over the last three or four years working on this project. And, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you've got a marketable skill. You've got something you can use to go build things. And I think when we can really dig into this process and talk about the story and, and all that stuff, I think our, our listeners will really benefit from it because yeah. it's just, it's a great, a great tale of hard work and effort and, 
you know, keeping your eye on the prize. And, uh, and so I'm really excited to talk about it. So I wish you'd uh, get on the phone. With <laughs> well, uh, so here's the deal. He said he was going to look, he, he would look at it and, uh, you know, give me some advice and we'll see how that goes. But I was planning on hitting him up next time I'm in Seattle and which is the 16th of next month. So that's kind of my deadline. And I want to have my MVP done then by MVP for me, I, it's not going to be uh, fully functioning as far as like connected to databases and everything. Cause I'm still, that's where I'm caught up. Like I'm still learning that area, but as far as like functionality with the front end, you know, this button does this and the drop down shows up and, you know, functionality to the side, I want to have a hundred percent. And I'm yeah. close. Well, and I think that'll be the biggest thing is just make sure that your MVP, your minimum viable product for people who, who don't know the term, um, you know, just basically has, you know, some feature set, whatever it is. You know, maybe it's not every feature that you hope to roll out, but as long as it's got a basic feature set that you could roll out with, it, it'll be more than enough. And that'll be fantastic. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. So I'm excited. It should be fun. Yeah. yeah. So the other thing I wanted to just dip into, and, and it's probably a little preemptive because I, I don't know that much about it yet, but it's something I've stumbled across recently. Actually, uh, Borja, the uh, Spanish intern who has not been on the show yeah, for some time. What the now. hell, Borja? Um, Borja? Yeah, I know. His ass is just in bed right now, too. It's even worse. He's not even doing it. I should have kicked him and um, got him up. <laughs> Well, if we weren't talking through an Apple headphone, we'd have to sit and breathe each other's breath all night. Yeah. But uh, but maybe next week we can get him back on. He's been doing a lot of traveling lately. Um, he actually spent last week in New Orleans, and he's heading to Disneyland this weekend. And uh, so he's he's all over the place. Uh, he goes home, or the end of his, his trip is, or the end of this internship year uh, is June 10th. So oh, wow. he's only That's got about another... Up. Yeah, he's got about another month here uh the good news is borja actually landed a teaching job here too actually at my the same school my wife teaches at that's nice and uh, yeah so anyway so he will be coming back uh in the fall both he and they're they're working on a job for his girlfriend too and they'll be able to come back and kind of start a life here so it's pretty pretty exciting for them but anyway the uh what he introduced me to was this idea there's this new app out uh, what i honestly i don't know how new it is but there's this app out called anchor right now and the reason i'm bringing it up is because it's it's basically podcasting in the palm of your hands um i'm still trying to figure out how to best use it as part of this show, but some of the things I really like about it, well, you know, back to speaking or listening to a lot of, uh, content and things from this Gary Vaynerchuk guy. Um, he has been talking about sort of the next, next thing in sort of technology and advancement is going to be voice. Yeah. It's how, how you interact with things with your voice, you know, things like Alexa, things with like Siri, things like that, and how that's going to continue to improve. And he thinks that that could be one of the sort of the next great frontiers. And so he actually talks about this Anchor app also. And basically some of the cool features of it uh, are that, I mean, for maybe the purposes of this show, I was thinking it might be a way for us to produce some extra content. Because you can literally record a podcast, you can add audio bumpers, all this stuff. You can actually have guests on everything from the app, and then it will publish directly to iTunes or wherever, And uh, and which is pretty slick. I've not gone all the way through the process, so I don't really know how it works yet. I'm, I'm still, in, still in the learning I'm phase. I'm skeptical. Um, <laughs> well, because I, my, my biggest fear is I don't want to push some weird nonsense into the eggs feed and screw things up. Oh, maybe you now, like if it, start if a it different runs, account or something it, just to try it? Well, right now, because I'm super clever and this isn't live, so nobody can see it yet. But I was thinking about, we call it eggs extra. Oh, and it's I our see. like, and it's, yeah, you like that. And it's, uh, you know, basically just our bonus content because from your, basically you just put the phone to your ear and talk into it. You can put a music bed under you while you're talking. You can add sound effects. You can do all this stuff, you know, really produce it in there and then publish it. And so, you know, basically we would have a second feed that was the extra feed and uh, and both you and I can contribute to it. We can do stuff together on the app and we can also just do independent 
uh, I was playing with it today and I was bitching because my uh, Starbucks cup lid was leaking. <laughs> so I did 40, 45 seconds complaining about uh, my leaky Starbucks cup lid, yeah. which, you know, by the way, is a valid thing to bitch about. I mean, Starbucks is like the king of coffee and they're hot. If you get just black coffee in a cup there, yeah. it leaks like crazy. In the, out, then, of the, out of the cup or out of the top, the lid? Yeah, out of, out of like not the hole in the lid, but around the rim of the lid, ah. like where the where it sits on the cup. And it's like, you guys are the fucking coffee company. Pardon my French. It's <laughs> like, you, you guys should know how to do this. Well, you, you, see, you can see I get heated over this. Did you hear the story? And then of the today the problem was the, I got a... Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say I got an iced coffee today and same thing. The lid was leaking all over me. I couldn't. couldn't I hate it when they fill it so full. You go to put the straw in and it spills out all over the place. Yeah, it's the worst. Anyways, uh, I was going to say the guy that created the um, the heat wraps that go around the outside. Talk about a million dollar idea right there. Um, Yeah, there's there's a show. I can't remember who was watching it, but uh, they they did a kind of like a story on that dude and how he went from you know nothing living in his car to making millions of dollars just be by thinking of an idea to go on the outside of a cup you know and he he got the idea sitting outside of a coffee shop watching people grab the hot cups with a napkin and hand them to the customers with the napkin so that they could actually hold the cup so it's kind of a unique story yeah it's funny well, and that's the thing, right? I mean, most business ideas come from pl- practical things, right? It, it's if you spend too much time thinking about the idea, you actually miss the idea. Yeah. You know, the, what you really need is when you realize that problem or you find that itch that needs scratching, that is the idea. That is the business. And so, uh, you know, this guy, you know, the with the, the cup wraps was bright enough to, to recognize that, I guess. Yeah. Or somebody did it, it for I, him. I just remembered where I saw that. That was... Uh... At James and Lacey's house, and they were watching it. I uh, can't remember the name of the show, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask James and Lacey. So um, the one one other thing I thought was interesting about this uh, this Anchor app, um, and and I think it's just called an Anchor app or something. So you, you can go find it in the App Store uh, on iPhone. I'm not sure if they've got it on Android yet. But um, when you go into like the screen to do recording. Uh, it throws up a bunch of like topics that people have posted. Yeah. So if you're not sure what to talk about or you just want to get a podcast going, you can go in there and select a topic. And what's really interesting is if you pick a topic you like, so for some, for example, like the, some of the ones that are floating out right now are new to anchor intimate encounters, the judge Berlin blockade power of choice, you know, deepest fear, you know, but you can click on any one of these and then the little window that pops up is find a co-host, invite your friends or just start recording. Oh, that's crazy. And so with, oh, that's so with the find a co-host, basically it just pings people says, Hey, I'm looking for a co-host to talk about the subject and you can bring in a random human being and have a conversation. <laughs> that about could be awesome. Yeah. Which I think could be really cool. You can also with this app, you can receive voice messages. So like uh, listeners to the show could call and leave voice messages that we could then use as part of our programming. And uh, there's a lot of really cool features, and uh, I plan to dig into it a little bit more, see if I can find a way or, you know, and, and you as well, Mike, if we can find a way to make it work, uh, you know, to, to augment our programming. We've been trying to come up with ways to do bonus content and something like this. And one of the problems we run into in doing eggs is just finding the time to get together. And, you know, because we're in different parts of the, the states or countries, uh, you know, sometimes it's difficult to get together. And so something like this might make it easy to do a couple like little things on the fly. Uh, you know, and like if you go and you listen to other people's, you know, little micro podcasts that they're publishing on this platform, it doesn't all have to be massively thought out and produced and all this stuff. You know, you can really do a lot just by having a quick conversation or sharing a thought. Well, and, and that's kind of uh, how this podcast started. I remember thinking, you know, like just sitting at your house, we'd be barbecuing and some of the stuff we were talking about. I'm like, man, this would make a great podcast. It's kind of yeah. the reason the same I knew it would work. Even tonight. Yeah, I mean, even tonight, the 45 minutes before the show were as entertaining as the show itself. Yeah, that was a nightmare, wasn't it? Uh, we were dealing with, we were talking about that before the show, that um, setting up and everything was a Zencaster bullshit. And uh, I mentioned it, it 
earlier on in the beginning, kind of as we started, that I wanted to circle back about it. And what I want to talk about is uh, I don't think we're going to be using them anymore. And the reason. Yeah, no, it's funny uh, because, well, so for people who don't know, Zencaster is a online podcasting platform. And actually, if you go back and listen to any of our old shows, I mean, for a long time, we were giving them pretty high praise. Yeah, they were great. I mean, we were able to record with me in Washington on the road and you in Spain. You know, yeah, I mean, so it definitely served its purpose when we needed it. But now I mean, right now I have a four second right delay. Now, I, I hear everything I'm saying right now over again. And it's been messing with me the whole night that read the start, like uh, talking about the war, the world history book or whatever. I I kept getting lost in the middle of it because of the echo. And now I'm just ignoring it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a struggle. And that's been one of the things, you know, sort of the the hacks or one of the problems we've been trying to overcome in doing the show because we do it remotely almost every week, you know. Uh, you know, when when we have the opportunity, we'll do it in person and obviously that's my favorite way to do it, but if we can't or if time, you know, time is a, a factor or money or whatever is a, for some reason we can't get together. Uh, Zencaster has been our go-to. Now we've had three instances, or at least two, maybe three, three. where we've really been hosed actually more by the software. More like really hosed three times, adding an extra hour and a half or two hours of work for me, probably five or six times. Yeah, and it's just becoming problematic. Now I don't know. I mean, maybe we need to get the Zencaster guys on the horn. And maybe their engineers can walk us through it. Maybe there's something in the way we're setting up. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, they, they, but they it did updated seem to their come site. With this last round of updates. Yeah, they just they just changed the software. There's like a you know a test for your sound card or whatever, and there's like a different layout on the screen. You can see the waveforms as it's recording. It's kind of cool. Like the update's cool, but I've had nothing but problems with it since then. Like my, that's $3,000 Midas mixer. I just bought doesn't act as a sound card with them. So we can't use that. So we spent two hours one night messing around with, you know, finding a mixer that would work for us. And tonight we spent an hour trying to get it dialed in without this delay and we can't. And it's, I, yeah, it's. I, I actually, I, I, I want to. I just, I'm going to say it. Last week, we recorded uh, Ryan, and it was an awesome interview. He could hear me. We were talking the whole time. It was, it was great. I go and download the files, and it only picked up Ryan, both Ryans. So you and and Ryan Carson, me, I wasn't on it. So every time that which is insane, yeah, it makes zero sense Actually, because we're using the same sound card. How would it not pick up my vocals and how could he hear me, but it not record me? You know, that makes yeah. zero sense. What? Yeah. And that's the thing is that we're just we're having these kinds of problems and it's making it really difficult because we we don't have our reliable source anymore. And uh, and so I think we're definitely on the hunt. Um, I, I've heard about a couple different services. I know one that was recommended to us is Zoom. Uh, I think it's zoom.us and, uh, and I think that might be a good viable option. I've heard, I haven't podcasts, heard a lot of good about Skype. Yeah. I've heard some that use Skype, but I haven't heard good things. Um, I'm almost tempted to just do, you know, the, the call-ins every time, because at least then I have control over the audio. I don't have to download it later and find out that something's missing. I mean, thank goodness that last week it was me that went out because I went home to edit it. I could do overdubs. So I was able to kind of fix the show. But so if it was you, you say your questions, yeah, yeah it, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. And if you go back and listen to the show now, knowing this, you might be able to pick up on a couple moments where, you know, it, the timing's a little different or it feels just a smidge off. And you can hear me. And that's because we because we literally had to. Well, you literally had to go through and re-record your questions. Yeah, I could hear them in your recordings, but very quietly. So if I tried to boost that audio, you got a lot of the noise floor and it was just really grainy and bad. And so I tried to, you know speak like a second behind and kind of say the same thing, you know, and make it sound natural. But there's a few times where you can hear it just doesn't sound quite right. And you'll hear me talking, but it sounds like I'm on the other side of the room. And that's how it would have sounded originally. Yeah. Right. Anyways. I, yeah. I'm so venting. anyway, so that's, that's a real frustration. And yeah, I mean, this is just catharsis right now I mean, for, you know, anybody who's doing podcasting, um, you know, and we've been talking, Mike and I have a little bit, um, I've probably been brainstorming on it more than, than I've included him in the conversation, but I've been thinking a little bit about, you know, 
offering podcast coaching or some other things like that, just based on the experience that he and I've assembled over this last year. And uh, it's unfortunate that we're having all these troubles with Zencaster because they really would have been my go-to. In fact, I, I recommended them to uh, Adam Carolla's show uh, through their, their sound guy, their producer even. And so, so it's really frustrating that now it's, it's sucking so hard. Well, the thing is, it's such a good platform and like the idea is there, they just got to get these bugs out. Like if they can figure that out, I'd stay with them. I love the fact that it uploads the high quality file later and you, you know, like you can actually do a really good job producing the, the episode instead of starting with shit to begin with. You know? Yeah, well, and for people who aren't audio engineers, it actually offers some noise, you know, noise cancellation and uh, some level adjustments and things like that that it'll do automatically and sort of, you know, do a rough production for you. And uh, I mean, it, it is a cool platform. Uh, you know, and another so thing I'm, I'm that, I, that I wish they would fix, too, is they have a bumper button section, but it records to the track that we're recording. So we can't like play a sound effect and react to it or, you know, like have it in the show without it actually being in the show. So I can't set levels later or, you know, make it sound better than it would have just hitting the bumper. And it would be nice if they would make that like you could shut it off to be recorded so that that way you could hear it, but you wouldn't necessarily record to the track. So you just have the audio like the vocals. Yeah. Or even just put it on its own track or something. Yeah. I I think there's definitely some ways to improve it. And I think one solution might be, you know, people like us reaching out to Zencaster and trying to, to help them with the product. You know I mean? I, I assume they work with podcasters and stuff all the time to try and improve the product and it is better. It's come a long way. The, like Mike was talking about the way the platform's better. Everything's cooler and works better. Honestly, these little pre-checks and stuff like that are helpful and it's good to see that, Oh, okay. Everything is hooked up correctly. Well, it, it might be, but, you know, the pre-checks are cool, but like if it caused, we didn't have any errors, we didn't have any, Oh, it failed until the new system so like it would it would just work we didn't have like oh sorry your sound card isn't up to date or whatever like we've had that happen twice and and it's just frustrating but anyways sorry to end on a downer (laughs) well (laughs) Well, that's okay i kind of i want to talk about my truck (laughs) I, I, i got one more story and then we're done um oh no worries go nuts so after my last trip, I, I got back to Idaho. Um, the, the wedding was on Saturday and I just left directly from there. And so I got back late Sunday night and, uh, in Anacortes, um, I stopped and got an oil change. My car was making a weird noise. It was, um, it was obviously power steering. So I, I had them top off the power steering fluid, but they're like, Oh, your, your power steering pump is going out. It's going to need to be replaced. I'm like, oh, that sucks. Uh, how much is it? You know, thinking maybe I could get it done right then. And uh, it was, he quoted me like 600 bucks. I'm like, okay, that's that's a little more than I want to spend. He, and I asked him, I'm like, can I drive on it? And he's like, yeah, just keep fluid in it. So I, I topped it off every time I got gas, drove to the wedding in Chelan, did that. And before I left, added more, you know, fluid and, and started heading back home. And, uh, about the time I got to Boise, it started making this really loud noise. Like the power steering was having issues again. So I pulled over, I put more fluid in, it was full. It, it, it wasn't like, it it couldn't take any more fluid. So I'm like, whatever, get, keep driving. I get to Pocatello and I hear a pop and, uh, I, I know, you know, like he told me, he's like, okay, so if it runs out of fluid, it can seize and that'll cause the belt to break and that could cause some other shit. And so I was like, okay, heard the pop, the belt probably broke. And, uh, from my juvenile delinquency, I have knowledge that you can drive on a car with no alternator for a few miles. So I just kept driving and I literally pulled into my driveway with no power, no headlights, no nothing, but I made it home. And so, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got in my driveway and the truck died. It was perfect. Like you couldn't have planned it. And so I unloaded all my gear, called my cousin up and we took it into a, a dealership that, uh, well, it's not a dealership. It's kind of a mom and pops repair shop kind of place. Right. And uh, I'm not going to name the name of the shop because it's a small town and I'm dealing with small town shit as it is. So I don't want more shit, you know. Um, 
they quoted me three hours to fix the power steering pump and it's 80 bucks an hour. So it's like 240 bucks and plus the cost of the parts. So I'm assuming like right around 500 bucks and the power steering pump where it's located, I can't do it myself. Uh, it's got to be on a lift. It's quite a, you know, it's like with a lift, it's fairly easy without a lift. It's gnarly. And, uh, so I figured, you know, I'll, I'll have them do it. Drop the truck off and said, Hey, can you call me before you start doing the work? And, uh, yeah, no problem. No big deal. Uh, give me, you know, whatever they call me the next day and they're like, Oh, we hit your budgets. And so we stopped working, but here's what we did. They didn't even touch the power steering pump. Evidently the alternator had seized up and it broke the belt and they didn't call me and say, Hey, it's the alternator is this and that. And they're trying to sell it off. Like right now. Well, yeah, it was probably the alternator was causing it to push fluid out. So that's why you thought the pump was going out. No, 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 no. When really it was the alternator. It could be fine right now. And I know it was not, it was a seal around the, the, um, driveline, you know, where it, the steering wheel goes into the, for the power steering, the seal had popped and that's where the fluid was coming out. So I know there's an issue there. I wanted them to work on the power steering they fixed an alternator, but they hit my budget, which was 500 bucks. I told them, you know, that's what I'll put into it. The truck's got 300,000 miles on it. I don't want to put a lot of money to that truck, but here they are. They spend, you know, the same budget on an alternator that I could have done myself. An alternator is two bolts. It's simple. It's like you pull it out, part 60 bucks, you put a new serpentine belt and you're good. I would have been in like a hundred bucks. Now I'm in $500 for an alternator and a part on a truck. I don't even want to keep, you know, it's, it, right. It's, it's it, yeah, it's brutal. I mean, there's literally like nothing more maddening than car. Crap. Yeah. Like, I mean, I swear every time I take my car in for anything, an oil change, whatever, they always have to put new brakes and new rotors. Yeah. On. I mean, it's, I mean, I swear to God, I go through rotors like nobody's business. And I, I, to be perfectly honest, I don't even know what a rotor <laughs> is. But for, for whatever reason, I go through them like crazy. And so I know I've, I'm due for new rotors here pretty quick. And uh, But, I mean, I can't get out of the shop for less than a grand, you know. And it's just, I mean, it's brutal. It, to, it's frustrating to, to because, you know, like some of the, like I do my own brakes. I do like it, regular stuff because the amount of miles I drive and the stuff that I put on that car, if I just took it in for everything, I wouldn't be able to afford anything, you know. And uh, I've already put like $3,000 in repairs in that truck in the last two years. And it's got a lot of miles on it. So I'm thinking I'm just going to keep it for like a... A to B car around town, but I don't want to go put a grand into it and then have to go buy another car. And that's why I wanted him to call me first. And so I'm thinking, you know, like I don't want to write him up on BBB because, you know, that's kind of jacked, but at the same time I want to. And and so I don't know what to do. I I want to like try and bitch about it a little bit to him. Yeah. I don't know. The, the one thing I'll say, because I mean, you know, car stuff sucks and I, I mean, I know that timing wise and everything else, like it just couldn't have been more annoying, uh, you know, for you. Um, the one thing I will say, and it's just a little thing, but it's like, it would make all the difference in the world. And I don't know if this matters to you. Maybe I'm sticking on a weird point, but the shop we use down here in Salt Lake, they're a pretty good shop. Like everything they do is good. They're very friendly. All that's, uh, you know, the work is done well and all that they're, they're good. But the one thing they don't do, or that I guess I should say that they do is, is every time you go there and you get a bunch of work done or whatever, you get your car back and it's exactly as you gave it. Now, maybe that sounds okay on its face, but like, when I give you a thousand dollars for a repair that I can't see, yeah, vacuum that car out. Yeah. Give it back to me a little better than I left it, and then the sting isn't quite so bad. So here's the deal, right? We did. Uh, There's a the place I get my oil changed in Anacortes. Um, the reason I go to them is because it's a it's cheaper than Jiffy Lube. Uh, B, they're a mom and pop shop, so I'm supporting a smaller business. And C, they give my car a wash. They like on the other side of the oil lube thing, on the way out, they have a car wash and they run their car through it. They vacuum it, and you get a clean car and you get everything for the same price you would to go to like a. Yeah, it's funny. It's well, it's just a mental game. But I mean, I, I've actually written this. You know, the shop we use down here. I've written them like two or three different times and said this because. Like we, for example, we have a one car that's a little bit older, my wife's car, and we took it in for, I don't know, a 150,000 mile tune up or whatever, you know, they do replace the timing belt and do all this other stuff. And, but it's expensive. It's like 1300 bucks, right. To do this tune up. 
And so we went in, we, you know, set some money aside. We did this tune up and we got the car back and it was just filthy. You know, the car was just dirty and, and they didn't add any dirt to it. You know, they didn't make it worse, but you just dropped all this money. And for a lot of people, that's a lot of money. And so you've just given up this big chunk of money and then you get your car back and it's like, what did I buy? Like, this doesn't feel like I did anything. It just feels like I handed you money. And the, you know, that particular shop, I mentioned this idea to, I was like, God, you guys should really just try washing the cars. I was like, I mean, it doesn't seem like much, you know, and it would cost you, you know, $20 in, in labor and, and materials. If they had to the setup right, it wouldn't be car. that, you know, it's just a matter of. Yeah. I mean, it could cost you $5, yeah. you know, you know, just to pay the guy to drive it over and wash it real quick. But I mean, that, what that would do for a person's like sort of mental happiness when dropping that kind of money in a car. I mean, it, it would go forever. I mean, for me, it would for sure. I mean, I would feel infinitely better if I picked up my car. Clean. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is you think about like uh, it's cliche or whatever, but you look back in like the um, the fifties and sixties, the, the, you pull up to a gas station and you got one guy cleaning your windows, one guy vacuuming, one guy pumping the gas, one guy checking your oil and one guy checking the, you know, the air in your tires. Mm-hmm. And that's just at a fill up. That's just, you know, common thing every day. And, and I think the level of customer service and the level of um, just attention to detail has dropped dramatically in the last 20 years. You know, I, I, yeah, it's true. And some of it is, you know, I think it's a little bit of technology is to blame. You know, I mean, now you can go to the gas pump, you can swipe your own you card. Know, you you know what I stuff, hate the know? worst about new gas pumps? They got ads on a fucking gas pump and you can't get away from them. You either have to go in the store gas pump TV. and it's, it's like, you can't, I, I hate the inundation of like, this is what you have to watch for 15 seconds while you're doing this and you have to do this and, and it's everywhere. You just can't get away from it. Um, yeah, no, I agree. And, and actually that's one of the things that, you know, we've talked about on the show and, and with some of these different guests we've had on sort of recently is, you know, being able to break away from things and sort of finding tangible moments and, you know, having meaning, meaningful relationships with people and stuff like that. And, and it's getting, I mean, it's very hard with technology and everything else. I mean, you know, like I was starting to say, I mean, you can pay for your, pump, you know, pay, put your own card in your own pump, gas up your car and leave and never have an interaction with a human being while you're being inundated with ads while you're being, you know, yep. I mean, it's like, I mean, the whole experience is not gratifying well, think about, think about going to the bank, right? <laughs> You used to have to go and stand in line, wait and talk to a teller, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with still doing that. I know people that still do that all the time, but me, I go to the ATM and I deposit my checks and everything through. I haven't seen a teller in two years. The only time I go in is if I have an issue. And to me, that's great. But at the same time, you think about the day-to-day communication of just talking to people. It doesn't, uh, it's not like it used to be like well it's all about just having that relationship right i mean you don't know your teller anymore i mean i know even when i lived in idaho i knew my teller at chase you know i went to the same branch all the time i knew the people that worked there they always handled my deposits and helped me out you know and and i knew those people now when i come to the, the chase here in salt lake the one that i go to I mean, just like you're saying, I mean, they have a nice ATM in the lobby that'll do big withdrawals and big deposits and all that stuff. So I I literally walk by three employees to get to the machine so that I don't have to work with them, you know. And if you work with them, you have to fill out a deposit slip by hand and all this stuff. Or I can just go to the ATM and be in and out in two minutes. And so, I mean, but it's killing all that sort of customer service stuff. And, And I think that we're going to find as sort of time goes on and technology improves and things like that. I, I think we think we want more technology and more ability to do all this stuff. And maybe a lot of people do, but I think there's going to be a lot of folks too, that start to long for that sort of human interaction or start to long for like that, that little bit of customer service contact. Um, I, I like the, if if we didn't if we just went throughout life it just staring at our phones all day and never having face to face communication and, and talking to people we're just going to turn into a world of zombies and we already are it's it's scary like that 
Uh, yeah, it's yeah. true. I mean, you can't go anywhere without everybody's phone down. I mean, I still get a kick out of it when you go to a nice restaurant or whatever, and the table next to you is four people all looking at their phones. Yeah. What's the point of going yeah, to the restaurant? Like, what, what are we doing, guys? Well, and, <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm as guilty as everyone pizza. else. I've I've worked at a Starbucks in town for about a year now. It was actually well to be clear. You don't work at Starbucks. You're working out of a Starbucks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're you're working on I'm your a project from Starbucks. Starbucks. You're not working for Starbucks. But I've been working go. at the same one for <laughs> a long time, and uh, it was actually your fault. I used to work over at Mocha Madness, and and uh, you and Clint were there one day and showed me the app on your phone, and it's the same. You know, I don't want to deal with. Uh, you know, like personal face-to-face -face ordering and stuff like that. You can, you can just order it on your phone. You don't have to get your order right every time. You know, it's, it's nice, but it's also, it's, it's a pain in the ass because I, you know, like I'm just now I've been there for a year and I'm just now getting to know some of the people that work there. And it's, it's fucking weird. It's, it's, you know, it's. It, yeah. Well, and you know, but it makes that experience at Starbucks more rewarding. Yeah. I mean, unless these people are pestering you, but I mean, in general, you know, to go there and have them have a person that knows your order and knows who you are and actually gives a damn that you came in that day and stuff like that. I mean, that goes a really long way for just goodwill with the company, you know, and unfortunately, you know, didn't mean to pull you away from Mocha. They're good people over uh, at Mocha Madness. No, too, do, do you want to know the 100% the um, reason why I do it, why I go there versus the, uh, Mocha? Um, it's easy for me to look on my transaction history for PayPal and see all the t the coffee because it goes right to the Starbucks app. And then at the end of the year, when I'm doing my taxes, I have all my write-offs right there. Instead, you can write off $12,000 in coffee. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's a big expense, but you know, it, it, the way I justified is I was paying for an office space, but yeah, it's cheaper, it's than, cheaper rent. than rent. I have a place to work. I go to work. You know, it's not like I'm going to just hang out. I'm there and I'm working and it makes me feel like I'm actually working, which is good. But well, and that's the life of like the digital nomad, you know, so many people, I mean, both you and I work remotely a lot and I mean, places like Starbucks have been saviors, yeah. you know, I mean, it used to be really difficult to find a place to just go work. Well, if, if Pocatello so had like one of those co-op places, you know, like, uh, what's that one that we went to the other day for yeah, co-working space? Yeah, if, if there was that kind of thing around, I would love that because I'd be around people, but I could still, you know, like disappear and work and not have to. Yeah, they're really cool. Well, I was down in L.A. a couple of weeks ago, or I guess maybe a month ago now. I was working out of a co-working space downtown uh, called The Collective, uh, and it was it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, the experience was great. The building was great. Everything was cool. Uh, the people were awesome. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't have asked for a better setup to work out of while I was out there. And those spaces are popping up everywhere. Yeah. You know, they're in every major city, you know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if before long one does show up in Pocatello. Yeah, it'd be nice. Or uh, maybe you and I ought to talk to some people about getting some <laughs> but, but, uh But, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it's a really cool thing. And for people who are sort of digital nomads or self-employed or, you know, don't want to be confined, you know, otherwise to sort of a traditional office structure, uh, having a place like that to go, whether it's Starbucks or one of these uh, working uh, co-ops, is uh, is a great thing, I think, for the the overall uh, business. Yeah. Well. Anyways, uh, shout out to Yellowstone Starbucks. They've been awesome. So, with that, yeah. No, they're great. In fact, uh, the last time I was there, I remember I was buying a drink for oh, you. Oh shit! I forgot about it. And they and they yeah and they knew your drink via me. So like. They, di they didn't even know, like I just said I was buying a drink for my friend and they said, oh, is this for DJ Mike? <laughs> you know, or whatever they called you, some cutesy little man. Yeah. And, uh, but they knew your order and everything and they just, they sang your drink with me basically, uh, you know, and how they knew that it was me and you and putting all that together, I have no idea. Yeah, it, but, uh, you know, but whoever it is obviously pays attention and, and had seen us working in there together and stuff and, and put it all together. Which says so, a lot, uh, you know. Uh, you know yeah. Yeah, it's huge. And in terms of customer service, I mean, you know, if you're Starbucks, what better employee could you have than one that pays that much attention to your customer? Yeah, that's great. So, cool. All right, well, with that, let's get yeah, out of here. It's, it's now, uh, now midnight. It's technically Thursday. So uh, we got to launch this yeah. thing. So, so as usual, uh, you can catch uh, all things eggs at eggscast.com. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram at eggs show. Uh, you can get the show iTunes every place. 
you can find me, uh, Ryan, with our two media group, and now Mr. CEO Ryan Rogar at Ryan Rogar uh, on Medium, on Instagram and Twitter, as well as r2mg.com. Uh, so, and Mikey? Uh, just djontic.com. It's all there. See, I got I got to get a shorter list. So yours is way better. I was just looking at my notes here, and I've got like 12 things. Well, you got much. the domain, so, so just go with ryanrogar.com. Problem solved. Well, ryanrogar.com actually points to medium.com. Mm. It goes to my medium profile, my writing uh-huh. profile. Uh, be- because that's what ryancarson.com uh-huh. does. So, so, but nobody tell him how big a mark I am because I, I'll feel silly if he uh, if he sees all this. When I when I but, sit down uh, with him, he'll be like, "You gotta listen to the next episode." <laughs> so anyway, all right. Well, everybody have a great night and uh, Mike. Good time just visiting with you. It's been fun, and uh, we'll be back next week with a, a fun guest. And uh, yeah, that's it. Have a great week.